It's a very strange scene in many ways. The original sketch, which nobody's seen for 150 years. Where the women's eyes rest tell a massive part of the story. It kind of is a call to action to reopen the Pandora's box of art history. My name is Jessie Jones and I'm an artist based in Dublin. This painting is uh, a painting of Eva Gonzalez by Edward Manny. We're looking at a woman sitting on a chair in quite a nice kind of drawing room, like very beautiful woven carpet, like very fine room. It doesn't look totally like a, a place you would make art because regardless of getting paint on your dress, you really wouldn't want to get paint on that carpet. And then a portfolio, which I, I imagine is her portfolio. And then we have her painting on an easel. There's a lot of complicated things happening around femininity and at the time, who gets to be an artist. We talk about this painting because it's a Manet. We have to read her name through his name. But Eva Gonzalez was also an incredible painter. It must have been so hard to be a woman artist at that time and really have conviction about your work and then not be taken seriously. That must have been exhausting. You know, it was difficult to access classes or the academy or paint from like the nude. And then it must have been heartbreaking to see mediocre painters do really well, you know, that must have been annoying. For women to be excluded for so long is, is a very lonely place for Gonzalez. She would be downplayed or kind of thought of as a second option. When you look at Eva Gonzalez's work and Manny's work, they were completely each other's peers. After she was his student for so long, their paintings like grew at the same time and he developed in tandem with her. And he didn't have any other mentees, he didn't work with any other artists. She was the only one he worked with. Why would somebody only work with one person? There's something about their friendship that is important for Mane. I remember seeing it so many times when I was a teenager in the Hugh Lane. I was always struck by the darkness and her white dress and she really stands out on this black background. I think we only see her. We don't see what's happening in the background. She's not just this object to be looked at, she's important. I suppose the thing that I find most moving about the painting is her face. Like the way she's not looking back on, I think, in Manet's paintings. Where the women's eyes rest tell a massive part of the story. Manet was quite masterful of understanding the psychology of his subjects. We talk a lot about men painting women and subjecting them to a gaze, but I think when Gonzalez doesn't look back at us and doesn't look back at Manet, she is rejecting that sensibility. It's kind of a painting about painting a woman as, you know, a male artist. I guess there's like a loneliness of being represented without, without your own agency. That makes me realize why we have to step into that space, why we have to make images ourselves. So I feel like when I look at it, I have mixed feelings. Eva Gonzalez being forgotten, you know, dying so young in childbirth, and her work is not as famous as Manet. And she's an incredible painter. It kind of is a call to action to reopen the Pandora's box of art history and find the artists that have been excluded. Find the women that weren't shown in the salons and in the galleries and the museums, because they do exist. So I want to see more Eva Gonzalez paintings, I'd say. I'm Peter Schade. I'm the head of framing at the National Gallery. 
I'm looking at Manet's portrait of Eva Gonzalez. It's a very strange scene in many ways. So, so Eva Gonzalez is painting this flower still life, already framed, which is very unusual uh, for an easel painting to be worked on in a frame. The frame is a carved and gilded late 18th century frame. It's a frame that's about 100 years old at this moment. And it's not the type of frame that was necessarily common for Impressionist painters to, to refer to. It's a so-called baguette frame with fairly standard uh, twisting ribbon pattern and a carved leaf pattern. And then they also exist with this kind of embroidery at the top with a, with a, with a kind of elaborate crest and trailing flowers on the sides. So the frame is, is perched on an easel held by a blue scarf. The scarf is partly decoration, but actually is functionally holding the frame at the top of the, uh, of the, of the easel, stopping it from, 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 from falling over, because it's actually quite difficult to hold a, a fully three-dimensional frame on an easel. Easels are designed for holding canvases, not for holding three-dimensional frames. This is not a frivolous or a accidental choice. It's placing the, 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 the still life very much into the 18th century, but then also the whole scene is transferred, or at least has got a, a connection to the 18th century and to a time when flower still lives were often painted by women. I think this is trying to place Eva Gonzalez in the, in, in the realm of the great 18th century uh, female artists like Angelica Kaufmann, Virgil Lebrun. He's clearly kind of connecting Eva Gonzalez's work to the 18th century painters with this choice of frame and also with this choice of subject. It, it creates a, a, an atmosphere, a genre, with um, deliberation. Very few painters write about frames or um, give us their thoughts on frames and having a, a painter select a frame and, and, and paint the frame is something quite exciting, especially at this period. My name is Hayley Tomlinson and I'm a Paintings Conservator at the National Gallery. So in this painting we have Eva Gonzalez, a young uh, French woman, sat on a chair at an easel painting a flower painting and there's a print and a flower in the bottom right hand corner. For an artist trained in the academic French tradition you definitely have started with a lot of preliminary drawings and then you'd have transferred those drawings onto your prime canvas with charcoal. So it was very carefully planned. Quite hard to go wrong, in a way, but not very spontaneous. Manet thought that things, if they were to be sincere and modern and fresh and alive, they needed to be spontaneous. So he wouldn't have preliminary works that he was using. He would literally have Eva Gonzalez sat you know, in front of him in the studio to copy. Obviously, nowadays, you can't see the original sketch, the design on the canvas, it's all covered up with paint. But because of uh, modern imaging techniques, we can visualise it through um, XRF fluorescence scanning. So we can see the image and we can make a map of it. So when he did the drawing, with, with this very, very dilute brown paint, effectively. It was very loose, very um, unrestrained, you know, really quite freehand, not very detailed at all. He was regularly criticised for producing paintings that looked like they'd been dashed off really quickly, but the truth was absolutely the reverse, that he actually laboured enormously over his works and regularly had to rework things and it was his great ambition when he was trying to capture somebody's face he really wanted to get it done in one go he thought that was that was success but actually that's very very hard to do you know just to try and do that with no planning at all is quite a tall order he had the choice either to paint on top of mistakes or to scrape paint down because he wanted it to look fresh usually he chose to scrape paint off and start again in the case of this portrait, we know that he restarted the face 40 times. 
So poor Manet would start in the morning, I presume, trying to capture this face. Regularly in the evening, he'd be there scraping it all off to start again the next day. And we know actually from the x-ray, we can see, particularly around her nose, these scrape marks where he's used a palette knife just to take it all off. In fact, Manet said it was one of his greatest concerns that his sitters might actually say, I just can't do this anymore. And in fact, some of his sitters did say, no more. Eva Gonzalez was clearly very patient. It is really interesting and quite exciting when you are able to see something that's been hidden. So when the scientific team did the XRF and found the underpainting, which nobody's seen for 150 years, you appreciate his time and labour and you almost feel slightly sorry for him really that he had this negative uh, reputation. It wasn't the truth, you know. I think he went to great pains with his paintings and that's something that really wasn't appreciated at the time.